You see this street here? James Turner Street was one of the best streets. No, one of the worst. <laughs> Six weeks ago, few people had heard of James Turner Street. Now its residents are the most talked about neighbours in Britain. I didn't think anybody would watch it, never mind 5.1 for me. Honey for the poor. The programme has sparked a national debate. I think Benefit Street opened up a very big sore subject. Oh, 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 oh. And the world's just going crazy over it, like benefits. Don't ever give him money to get a can, ever again. Tonight it's their chance to have the last word on benefits. To the time, everybody with the same brush. It's about time you like, take a step in our shoe and see how it is living on benefits. People are quick to judge. Yeah. But if they haven't been in that situation before, don't judge. You have to know the individual, then you can judge the individual. That's a crowd. German press right side again. <laughs> These. Yeah. You know it's a cow. Well, I like to look out. When Benefit Street hit the nation's screens last month, it wasn't long before the world's press descended on James Turner Street. It's hit all over the world, mm. even Australia. We've had the French press, we've had the Russian press, we've had the German press. Um... British press. Russia's talking about it, Germany's talking about it, France. Dutch. <laughs> yeah, I've had them all at my door. I had someone from North Africa at the weekend. Street's very busy from first thing in the morning till probably about eight, nine o'clock at night. Cars, people, horns bibbing. Hardly a day's gone by without a newspaper headline. Druggy at 15, welfare fraud. Now I've got to learn to read. To, to be truthful, the headline of that pissed me off. We were getting scooped down as being scroungers and stuff. Fair enough, we may be having benefit handouts and stuff from the government, but listen, I'm not a f scrounger. At the heart of James Turner is single mum White D. Overnight, she became a media sensation. Hello, can you go? Hello, not to <laughs> I've never ever called myself a celebrity. I've never ever called myself famous. I've never ever. I'm D from the street. <laughs> yeah, Jenny can keep her block. Because <laughs> I'm D from the street. <laughs> the tongue in cheek sense of humour wasn't appreciated by everybody. If you don't work, how else are you going to get money? Sign on. No. I'd like to work for my money, thank you. You're not going to sign on? No. Yeah, but just imagine you could stay at home all the time and just get money and not have to do nothing for it. Nope. Not for you, babe. Why do I feel pissed off? Because the irony was the last. I'm saying to my kids, what do you mean you want to go find a job? Why do you want to be different to the rest of them? You know, go on the dole. And that, you know, as soon as you hear that, you're going to be, oh, I can't believe she's just said that to her children. So you're not going to hear me two seconds later saying my kids are going to go far. Are you going to sign on when you leave school and sit on the wall all day with no job? You're not either. Of course I want them to have jobs. I want them to have a good education. My kids are not going to be on benefits. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. I thought someone was being killed. It didn't take long for Dee's past to become tabloid news. I won't buy a paper if it's got anything like, and I'm having a good look because I can't be buying a paper with a picture of me on the front of it. That's just, that's just, that's just weird. <laughs> Do you, know, you know, that's not right. I've never been in front of a paper. I have now. I have now, yeah. Mm. There's been loads of malicious reporting. But at the end of the day, I haven't hidden anything from my friends, anything from my family. But it's done, it was eight years ago. It's like, you know, of course I've got a conscience, I'm a normal person. 
Do you know what I'm saying? You can never forget things. Of course you can never forget things, but you can attempt to move on. Surely. Hey! Someday! For six years now, Dee has been the neighbour on the street that many have come to rely on. Fun guy, you're going to meet your son in a few minutes. Especially 45-year-old alcoholic fun guy. Hello there, yeah, I'm phoning on behalf of a friend and neighbour of mine. Um, he can't actually read and write. He's had a letter come through the post saying he's got to attend an appointment at your place in Smethwick. OK, then. Bye. They're saying that you must have made the appointment. I haven't made no appointment. I don't make appointments. To discuss. I have got a special bond with Fung. I love him to bits. I love Fung guy to bits. I think that's just because of who he is, do you know what I mean? He's a real Jack the Lad and he's useless and... <laughs> but he's all right. He's not useless. I do. I do love me Fung. Before the first episode was broadcast, Fungi left James Turner to try and make a fresh start. I don't know why he went. Would you tell us why he went? Cos I told him to go. <laughs> I ain't meant for a couple of days, not forever. I don't know what man. What? JT. I mean, believe me, I'd look bad luck on that road. But, I mean, don't get me wrong, I miss, miss all the people and that, they're all my friends still. Do you know what I mean? I still miss them. But I know there's a lot going on on that road, do you know what I mean? Is that why you left? Yep. What's it been like since the series has gone out, then? Oh, people love me. I don't know why. I've had a really good response for it, do you know what I mean? Some geezer give me this the other day. The winner. It's not just the public taking an interest in fungi. Okay, guys. This one? Come on, then. As the odd job man of the street, he did chores for beers and meals. But this attracted the attentions of the benefits office. Charlene and Ian are my friends. I might get a can later. Basically, what they're saying is that because I'm the odd job man, I stop my benefits. Do you know what I mean? Which is still. Hopefully, due to coming, it's going to be all right. No, I can't say yet, you know what I mean? He tries and betters himself and then he gets knocked down, but, you know, how many times can you get up and try again? We've all had bad luck, but you just have to carry on. You know, you can't let. you can't be beaten. <laughs> Fungi's not the first James Turner resident to fall foul of the benefits office. Young parents Mark and Becky have also been caught out by the benefits system. At the end of the day, there's a difference between scrounging and a general mistake. And what we happened with our benefit fraud was a general mistake. I was living at a different address. Becky was living in the flat. And I used to stop over three times a week. And all I had done was left toothbrush and a few things. It's not at toothbrush, her. it's toothbrush. Tooth brush. Toothbrush. Thank you. At her, at her flat. So they assumed that I'd moved in all because I had a few clothes, my toothbrush. And they said, um, you're living together, your money's, your money's getting stopped. We regret it and we end on benefit fraud from then. I would like to see something come out of this series, whether it be for people, you know, like us, whether it be for people like Fungi, whether it be for, you know, Mark and Becky, God bless them. They're lovely, do you know what I mean? They're two kids who've had two kids, but they're doing a bloody good job. You know, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's got people talking. It's definitely got people talking. Not all the headlines have been negative. Smoggy, known on James Turner as the 50p man, proved an overnight hit. I'm trying to think of a better way to do things and a better way to make money and a legal way to make money without the job sense that. My little sample pack that I go around door to door with, telling people, showing people exactly what I've got. Offers of work soon followed, and Smoggy took a job selling gourmet food door to door. But things didn't go according to plan. It just didn't work out for me. It was working on commission and I just wasn't making enough. 
I mean, a lot of people um, would rather take my picture than buy the products I was selling. So it seems like I was still getting out there trying to make the sales, but people were more interested in myself rather than the products. <laughs> Toilet roll, everything's 50 pence, yeah? All top quality stuff, everything's 50 pence. Oh, oh. I got 50 pence. It's not that easy finding a job anymore, and I mean, you got a thousand people going for one job. The odds of you getting it are a thousand to one these days. I've just been doing more, focusing more on my 50p idea, writing down more to add to my list, writing down certain ideas that can help make it grow. I want to get a fleet of ice cream vans in every area that needs this service. You're selling 50p stuff? Yep, selling the 50p stuff. But for Mark, despite all the controversy, appearing on Benefit Street has been life-changing. From next week, I won't be on benefits. I'm going to actually be working and even living well, earning a proper wage. What are you doing? It's labouring. Someone's willing to give me a chance and show what I'm capable of doing instead of running me down saying, you've got no qualifications, you've got no experience, you can't do it. You've got no hope. It's at tech it for me to be on TV, for people to just say, I've got you a job. I'm glad I took part. It's been a rocky road. It's been a rocky road, but yeah, I am glad. Since Benefit Street hit the nation's screens, James Turner has become the most notorious road in Britain. James Turner Street, that street. The bad man street! And the residents who starred in it have had their lives put under intense scrutiny. People are quick to judge. Yeah. But if they ain't been in that situation before, don't judge. Mm -hmm. You don't know what it's like living off benefits. You really don't. Do you know, they tar everybody with the same brush and you can't do that. You have to know the individual, then you can judge the individual. Fungi has his own reasons for finding it hard to stay in work. I've been on diazepam since I was 16 years old. Who gave you at 16? The doctor. The doctor? What yeah. for? I, I was uh, sort of um, messed about with when I was a kid. Do you know what I mean? And it played with my mind and all that, and that's why the doctor gave me. How long have you been claiming benefits? I've been claiming benefits for a long, long time because of what happened to me when I was a kid and that. Do you know what I mean? It was, it, I found it hard to work around people. Do you know what I mean? Is that what you were telling Dee? Yeah, it's like trusting people. Do you know what I mean? I, 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 I was 16, 17 then. But even still then, it's, 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 I mean, it's still in the back of my mind now. Do you know what I mean? You never forget nothing like that. Do you know what I mean? Never. What that happened? Oh, I was raped twice. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's a horrible thing. Do you know what I mean? It's a horrible thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, when it happened to me, it's like one of them things, what did I call it, taboo. It wasn't really talked about then, do you know what I mean? Is that what sort of sent you off a little bit off the rails and that then? Me going off the rails, yeah. Of course, it could have been part of, because of what happened to me being younger and that, that could have been part of me doing what I'd done, going on to drugs and you know, not doing what I should have been. Now Fungi's trying to come to terms with his past and move on. Ten cans a day. That's what I was drinking before. All I've had today is three cans. Two empty there, and this one here. And I've got muscles now. We I never used to have muscles. See you know what I mean? He's got different demons to everybody else, but we've all got demons. And it's when you let them beat you, that's when they win. For White D, it's her depression that makes it hard for her to hold down a full-time job. What are you trying to do? Prescription. <sighs> what for? For tablets. What are the tablets for? For me to take. Antidepressants. I went from losing my job to surviving on £30 a week because I didn't claim benefits for over a year because of my frame of mind and because of what I was going through. What do you want? You can't go to the toilet. There's no ball in the bathroom, Gerard. You left it out on the road, so someone's probably stolen it. A shower. Mum. Calm down, the doctor said no, no stress. 
I mean, I've got two children. I'm a single parent. I get child benefit. I get child tax credits and I get ESA. I'm not raking in thousands. Even if they can work, some of the residents have struggled to find employment. Bare bones, off a seabed. Are you dating a bear? It's not on here. No, he's gonna wipe it all. Interests. I enjoy playing football, walking, swimming, and social losing with my friends and family. I think it's supposed to be socialising, isn't it? Started something new, though, Dave. Yeah, right, I agree, I agree. I've got to start doing some up. Uh, I agree. Do now. After their story was revealed in the papers, Mark and Becky now feel more confident to talk about why they found it so hard to get jobs. Where do I write that? It's in the right place. From Mark's point of view, like, it's hard. I had learning difficulties. When I was younger, um, I had perfect idea drum, which made me slow at learning. I'm not ashamed to admit that. I'm at a lower skill of reading age, and to be truthful with you, it kind of puts a downfall on because I want to do childcare, so it's harder to get a job. It is. Like, I'm starting my training and stuff now. I don't want to be on benefits, and I want to be this person where the children can look at me and say, yeah, fair enough, Mum and Dad had it tough when they were bringing us up from young, but you know what? Mum and Dad have got money to rub together now to provide us education. Now Mark has a job, they can start to make plans. What would you think, marriage? Since we're going to both be in jobs, we'll be able to afford a proper wedding. I know. Yeah. But I know but where, I'm, nice. I know where yeah. I'm going to get married. Where? Down a canal. Down a canal. So when I get pissed off for you, I can just show you in. <laughs> <laughs> There's people out there on benefits who want to work. There's people out there on benefits who don't want to work. So if you're handing these people that don't want to work um, a regular income every week or every fortnight, of course they're not going to want to go to work because they've still got money to live. Does claiming benefits make you lazy? Do you get used to it? No, I suppose you can. I suppose you could get used to it, yeah. You're easy enough. You will, you will get easy. But if you're getting your money every two weeks, and you're supposedly supposed to go out there and get a job or try and look for the job. For Fungi, his criminal past has taken its toll on his job prospects. I'm going to go back to what I was. You know what I mean? I want to be better than that now. You know what I mean? And I will be better than that. But right now, no one will employ me. Once I tell them certain things, they're just going to say, listen, sorry, mate. Can't work here. Do you know what I mean? What did you do? Your first ever crime? Oh, robbery. Your first crime? What did you try and rob? McDonald's. <laughs> it's serious. Yeah, I'm serious. McDonald's. McDonald's. What were you after? A Big Mac. I'd love to have a job. See the meme. But no, I can't get one because uh, my robbery charge in it. Because if you've done for robbery, arson. Uh, Gun crime. They will come up on computer when they look for it. For some on the street, being on benefits has made them more determined than ever to turn their life around. Honestly speaking, when I come to live in Jamestown, I like the place because it was summer, everybody was happy. But I mean, when you see down now, when you see the time people, the time people sleep, the time people wake up, that's where you see, the, you see that people, they've got nothing to do. Zimbabwe-born Titch experienced his first taste of life on benefits when he found himself moving into social housing on James Turner. I never sit on the door. This is my first time. He set about trying to start his own scrap business. I'm trying to create something for myself to do. I'm always the hard worker. I don't know how much I'm going to make, so I'm just, just trying to put as much effort as I can. I guess to sit on job seekers, it's not healthy. Now he's moved away from the street and plans to join the police force. There's no much help which to take people to go to work because some of the people, they stayed long without going to work, so they need help. 
if you identify what somebody wants to do, I mean, he can go away happy. Either you get the money or not get the money. That's, that's, that's what I believe. The job centres, they're not willing. They're just like, yeah, give us your job paper. Yeah, you'll get paid. P people don't need that. It's like everybody's being kept as they are. Nobody's given that chance to actually grow and improve themselves. I mean, there are courses and things for people to take, but it's just an inconvenience trying to get there on a minimum wage or on, the, on, on benefits. If the course is never going to be on your doorstep, you always have to travel, so that's more expenses. There's no help for people that want to actually try and better themselves. Do you think the politicians are talking about the benefit system. Do you think any of them really have a clue about what's going on? In no, they don't know what's going on. Not in our lives, they don't understand our life. To me, they wouldn't know what it's like to go out there and buy. But you got a tenant, so that tenant got to last you, say, three days. There's a tenant, mate. You go out and like, make that last you three days. You've got no chance. To me. I think Benefit Street <laughs> opened up a very big sore subject, and the world's just going crazy over it, like, benefits! Yeah, <laughs> the problem needs assessing. I've probably got, what, say, weekly income probably works out to about £200. But I know people that work their asses off. They haven't even got half of that a week to live on. That's what pisses people off, then, isn't it? But it is what pisses people off, but it's not my fault. It's the government's fault. Unless I become an MP, then it will be my problem. Are you going to become an MP? Never say never.